Hi guys, it's Julie. How's it going? Hey, I'm missing my countdown. I used to say three, two, one, but now it just goes boop, you're live. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. We are joining you from Damien's office today. <laughs> I've taken over my husband's office um, because everybody, everywhere else is taken. So up there you see Lonnie. This is Lonnie and Megan. Both these guys have twins, by the way. Lonnie and Megan. He just retired. He, they had a one-day thing where they retired him from the Patriots. He became a Patriot again for one day. He was with the Patriots, New England Patriots, for a long time. And then he got transferred to the Broncos. And then they said, oh, we want you to retire as a Patriot, I guess. So they had him as a Patriot for one day. And Megan used to be a cheerleader for the Patriots. This is Lawrence and Jackie. They live in New York. They both have twins. Anyway, we have a lot of our couples have twins, which is really weird. Um, but, okay, so good morning, good morning, Jill. I see you, Rachel, Kira, good morning. Hope you guys are doing great, and I hope your week is off to a great start. I know it's early Monday, but um, it's going to be a great week. So, today I wanted to tell you a little bit. I've been reading um, The 4-Hour Work Week. Have you guys read this? By Tim Ferriss, and I wanted to share a little bit with you about what I've been learning. It's kind of changing the way that I'm doing things. But first, I got to tell you about my best job ever was last week. And you know, Livy filmed a commercial a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, I guess, if you follow me on my story. And they decided they needed a parent in the commercial, so they brought us. They brought me a cup of coffee, and all I had to do was stand there and they were filmed it from the back and all I had to do every time they say action I just take a cup of coffee that was it literally it action drink action drink action I sat there for like a half an hour drinking coffee and they paid me a hundred bucks I was like this is the best job ever you don't have to do anything you just drink coffee it's amazing and you get paid for it so that was really fun. I was like, man, could I make this into a career? I'm, I'm really good at drinking my coffee, you know? So anyway, it was pretty fun. But speaking of work, you know, we all have it. We all have things to do. We all got people to email. We all got all this stuff going on. And sometimes it can get really overwhelming with the amount of things that you have in your head. I don't know about you guys, but there's like 20 to-do things on my to-do list. And some of the ones I meant to do last week, I haven't even got to. As a matter of fact, I gotta sell 65 tickets in the next eight days for my um, event that I'm putting on. I don't even know how I'm gonna do it. Good morning, Carrie. But it just, it happens, yes, she's got the coffee. I know I haven't had coffee yet this morning, believe it or not. So let's talk about three ways um, that you can be more productive. I don't, I'm looking for my notes, okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have read this book, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, but it's mostly about changing our mindsets, about the way we do things. And so some of the things I'm gonna tell you today, they might challenge what you've been doing. Um, they definitely challenge me with what I've been doing and I have not mastered these, but I'm working on them. Um, the first thing that you can do is follow something called Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law means that a task swells in perceived importance and complexity in relation to the time given to it. So for instance, you are going on vacation, you know exactly what things you have to do, what are the most important things. Good morning, Stacy. And somehow you are able to get them done in that couple of hours that you have before you leave for vacation. So maybe the whole week's worth of work, you're able to do it in like two days because you know like this is exactly what I have to do. You have to be judicious in doing it. You have to be ruthless. And um, that's one thing I learned is what you do is you decrease your time set aside for that task. And so it becomes then, um, it just simplifies the task. Uh, for example, uh, one of my jobs is when the final images come back of a wedding or an event, uh, I have to narrow those down to my favorites. So I could take a thousand images and I have to narrow them down to like 75 of the very best. Now, I haven't seen the pictures before, except for the ones I took, um, but going through, and there's so many good ones. It's a, it, Sometimes it can take me like two hours to narrow it down. So I tried applying this Parkinson's law. And so what I did was last time I had to do it a few days ago, I said to myself, Julie, you have 30 minutes to do this, you know, which seems impossible, an impossible task. But I sat down and you know what I found is I was so 
ruthless about cutting the ones that weren't my exact favorites. I didn't have to go back through them five or six times to narrow it down. I was able to narrow it down in 32 minutes. That's like a record. And so part of the thing that we have to do is give ourselves less time to do the task um, so that you are more focused, more intent on it. So that is number one. Use Parkinson's Law to, to shorten your task so that you know. Good morning, Eric. And the second thing uh, that we can do to increase our productivity is to really focus on only two or three main things. Ask yourself, if there's nothing else that I get done today, I want to get, I need to get this done. Focus on two or three main things out of your list of 20. I know you have a list of 20 or 100 and get those done before 11 o'clock in the morning. That is going to give you the best chance of um, diving in and getting those things done. I'm telling you, when you only try to focus on like what what two or three main things would I be happy with if I got it done today, it is so great. You get them done and then you have a chance maybe to finish the other things. So like I found that if I pick two or three main things, the other things they fill in the spaces later on, but I'm not overwhelmed with trying to do 20 things in one day. You know, your long to-do list. So first thing is use Parkinson's Law to make your time shorter so that force yourself to have a shorter time so that you are ruthless in what you're doing and direct directed and, per, and you know, simple and you got it done. The second thing is choose two or three main things for the day and get them done before 11 o'clock. So, and that brings me to the third thing, which is gonna kind of throw you for a loop, maybe it threw me for a loop. And the, the simplified way is to batch things together. So if you, um, you know, have to do your social media, batch it together on one day of the week. I was reading Jasmine Stardust, her whole social media for the month in one day of the month. I try to do mine once a week, but again, I'm not a master, but batch things together. Like for instance, I'm like asking Damien, why do we check the mail every day? Why do we take the time to go out to the mailbox, work down to the mailbox, other than being outside? We don't really need to because there's not really anything important coming in the mail. We pay our bills online. So batch things together. Now that brings me to the point of email, right? It's like, cause you're thinking, get those two or three done things done before 11 o'clock. How am I going to do that? Part of the way you're going to do that is by checking your email only at 12 and 4 o'clock in the day. 12 and 4 o'clock in the day. And, you know, I'm not, and not obviously checking it first thing in the morning. I'm really working on this because I check my email like 100 times a day. I don't know about you guys, but it just pops up in the ding and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is it? You know what I'm saying? Like we check it all the time and then you get off on a thread. Oh, I got to email this person back. So that's the point is check your email twice a day. 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock, and then you have time to respond to the things. So you have until 11 o'clock to do those main things, then you check your email, then you have time to respond if you need to, and then you check it again at the end of the day to see like, okay, does this change anything that I have to work on tomorrow morning? So I hope those tips work for you. Those are three tips that have really helped me a lot. So it is um, Parkinson's Law, make the time shorter, force yourself to do it in a shorter time. Two is do two or three things, the main things that you need to do before 11. And four, and three is batch your things together so that you're only doing them a couple of times a day. The other thing he says is like three times a day, ask yourself. And he says, put it on your computer where it pops up. Am I inventing things to do right now? <laughs> I mean, have you guys ever done that where you're like, I think I should organize all my contacts or I think I should do this. I do that too. So I'm like trying to work on that. Um, but anyway, I hope that helps you have a more productive week. And uh, if you're, if I don't know, tell me, I'd love to hear your take on it. Four hour work week. And it's an interesting book. I don't know if my work week will get down to four hours, but you know, whatever. I, it's, it's good to try different things. And um, lastly, if you haven't bought your tickets yet for Look to the Sky, it's our charity showing. If you have $11 to spare, could you just go to the link and buy a ticket? Because I need to sell 65 tickets in the next eight days. Um, and if we don't buy the tickets, it's not going to be able to go on and the proceeds are not going to be able to go to the Boys and Girls Club. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm showing a film um, here at Century Theaters. It's going to be August 29th and it's called Look to the Sky. And the question is, if Superman was alive, what would he do if he was real? But there are kids who are doing superhuman things like swimming across the Great Lakes. I'll put it in the um, comments, Carrie, or also in the post. Um, it's going to be risinghero.org. Go to risinghero.org. It's going to say Showtimes, and you're going to click on it. It'll show you the Napa one and how to buy tickets for that thing. 
So if you're going, it's going to be August 29th, 6.30 p.m. It's going to be awesome. It's family friendly. I want you to bring the kids, bring the family, bring anybody you know who wants to be inspired and encouraged. And hopefully it's just going to push people to realize that they can go past their boundaries and do amazing things. But if you have $11, could you please go buy a ticket so this can go on? I have to sell all the tickets by 8.22, August 22nd. I got eight more days to sell 65 tickets. So anyway, yes, thank you, Carrie. Yes, risinghero.org. All right, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Mwah! I love you so much. And just praying you're gonna have a great week this week and do some amazing things, have some amazing opportunities, and just have the grace and strength to um, walk at that pace of grace this week. All right, love ya, bye.